We go out there and we fight. Nice touch to the body there by Selecki. Take his back. I look for my choke. Wait for the tap. And the tap never came. Selecki's got the body locked here. For the first time, I find myself out of the first round. I've had a complete adrenaline dump. My arms and legs don't work. Everything is really bright, really loud. It is like the worst experience of your life. First fight was a fairy tale, the rest was a disaster. Yeah, we grew up, you know, with a very different version of faith. We're from the Northeast. So for me, I would go to church, but that was kind of where it started and stopped. It was one of those things where once I graduated high school, I, I just kind of left my faith there. I got into martial arts by what I thought for a lot of my life was accident. At like four years old, I saw the Power Rangers and you know, they had little scenes where they'd be kicking the bag or doing forms with each other or whatever it might've been. I wanted to be one of them. The thing that I loved about Jiu Jitsu and martial arts in general as a kid was being treated with respect all the time. And that was the big thing was the camaraderie. I was terrible. But the thing that kept me coming back was the fellowship and the camaraderie and the guys that were treating me like an equal. When I was at school, I wasn't getting that. So from six to 16, I won no gold medals. I started to see a little more progress and a little more progress. You know, the first time I won, I was competing against adults, but they were beginners. So really I had no business being in that bracket, but in my mind, you couldn't tell me anything. I had just beaten grown men. I wanted this respect and I wanted everybody to think I was something that I wasn't. If I could just be this hero, then all my problems would go away. All this feeling of imposter syndrome, that would all go away if I could just win. And that's really what it became for a long time. So I go out to fight my first amateur fight and I won in just over a minute. Temporarily, you feel that void. And you're like, oh man, these people love me. They care about me and things are gonna be great. And I'm three and oh, and then I lose. All of my fights up to that point, I was going out there and finishing the person in the first round and I lose a decision. That set me into questioning everything. In my mind, I was on this trajectory to the top. Now, do I even wanna do this? Do I even have what it takes? They're having to take money out of my fight purse because I didn't sell my ticket minimum. I had to go back home and fight in Myrtle Beach again. And the whole 12 weeks leading up to that fight was me questioning everything. The second something didn't go my way, I went into this tailspin questioning my training, questioning do I have a chance to make it anymore, and just worrying about things that were so far beyond my control. I started to say, what if those things don't happen? What am I gonna be left with? My whole life, I was Joe the kid that is obsessed with Jiu Jitsu. Joe the kid that's got a really bright future in this thing. And then I was, this is my friend Joe, he's the professional fighter. That had become my identity. What it led me back to was, this is where God put me in my life. I wasn't being pastored, I wasn't in a church, but I had discovered my faith again that I had not even thought about since I was a kid. I started to fight again from a place of victory, but not victory in winning and losing and fighting, but just a place of, this is the best thing I could ever have. Somebody had got my fiance at the time and myself tickets to go see the UFC as an early wedding gift. And we watch a fight of two guys in my weight class who were very good. But I look at her and I'm like, I can do this. Like, they look like me. They, they fight like me, I can do this. And she's like, yeah, I have no doubt. And I get back to work that Monday and my boss, who was really supportive of my career, she looks at me and she's like, how are the fights? And I looked at her and I literally got tears in my eyes and I go, they were really good, but I think I'm gonna quit. That was the start of it all. Basically, we got married, went on our honeymoon, came back and moved. I had this desire, and so did my wife, of having a sense of community when it comes to fellowship and not just feeling like you're going through this walk on your own. When I walked into Jiu Jitsu Mat as a white belt, I had upper belts to help me learn what to do. But in my faith walk, before we came toward Wilmington, I never had that. We're gonna grow as people and in our faith because we're gonna have that community that we've never had before. I get the best training camp in my entire life, and then I go on to fight, and I get knocked out after the two best rounds of my entire career. What I did was get back on the horse and start looking for a fight right away. I went on to win a three-round decision where I was controlling the entire fight against a tough opponent. That's when I got the call to go on Dana White's Contender Series. Being flown out to Las Vegas, picked up in a limo, a per diem, it was mind-blowing to me. My wife's working, I'm not. We actually sat at dinner a week from the event and I looked at her and I said, what are we gonna do when I lose? And she looked at me and she was like, 
you're not going to lose, and I don't want you to worry about that. It was me, my coaches, and four important people to me. There was no fanfare. And I just remember pacing in the corner and looking at my wife and giving her a nod, going, I've got us. It's my turn. And I finished my opponent in the first round. Front, it's full side control here for Selecki on the ground. So oh. now, and he's putting his neck in danger here. And still, oh, trying to crack it hard to mount is Joe Selecki. Wow. Still more than a minute to go. And Wallace is out. Unconscious. Joe Selecki by submission in the first I didn't get up and run around the cage and... I didn't scream and yell and I just crawled away from my opponent and got in the middle of the cage and I just put my head down and prayed for a second. And this was God's grace acting in me. With getting to the UFC, I kind of thought all my problems would be solved. And it just wasn't the case. I still feel like the little kid who couldn't win a jiu-jitsu tournament. I still have imposter syndrome when I get out there. I'm 3-0, but I'm still getting in my own way. As I'm going through that, I then lose again, and then I start to understand, okay, I need to use the gifts I've been given to glorify God, and He has a plan for me. I felt something I've never felt before in the back room. And I actually looked at my corners and I said, guys, I have pure joy right now. And it's not joy of I get to go out there and fight, I was still nervous. It was joy of knowing whatever lied on the other side, I was okay with that because that's God's plan for my life, truly. My identity is not in fighting. First and foremost, I see myself as a child of God. Right below that is being a father and a husband. My identity is in those things now. That's something I would have never even considered before because I, growing up, the only thing I thought of is, if I am not a martial artist for a living, I have failed. And now, if this was all taken away from me tomorrow, I'm okay. I will go to work and come home and pastor my family and shepherd them and look at how I can serve God with what he's giving me then and there. People are always asking me questions now, and that's what I want. I want to lead people toward Jesus. It's so important for me, as I go through the ranks, to hold fast to my faith and to Jesus and to make sure I'm honoring Him with all that I do. Looking back on my life, I wouldn't change a thing. I've gotten to have a career that not many would get to call a profession. I've gotten to travel places and experience things, and I've never pictured my life this way, but it's what I would have always wanted. It didn't come the way I thought it would. It didn't come through any other thing other than God's hand. What seemed like accidents were not accidents. What seemed like coincidence were not coincidence. It was by design, and I'm just so truly grateful for that. Going through losses, whether it's in sport or in life, is so difficult, and it's so tempting in today's world to turn to the world. Whether it is a device or a social status or an identity that others have given you, those things can't change your life, but Jesus can. Jesus is the constant. He's not changing. He's there. And persistence in pursuing your walk with Jesus will change your life. Hey, I'm Joe Selecki, and you're watching This Is Me TV. Hold up, hold up. Thank you for watching, sharing, ringing that bell, and dropping a comment below. We love creating these inspirational face stories for you and thousands of others. Now, all the stories on this channel are brought to you in partnership with Impactus and our donor funding, which means people have given so that you can be encouraged in your faith. Yeah, people care that much about you. And today, we'd like to invite you to be a part of this mission with us. This Is Me TV exists to encourage and empower the online generation to live unashamed for God and use their God-given gifts to influence culture. We do this by creating stories like the one you just watched. And to date, we've had over 1.8 million viewers watched and be encouraged in their faith right here. It's mind blowing to see how God has and will continue to use This Is Me TV. So would you be willing to join us today and help us equip this generation for a life of purpose and godly impact? The link's below or head on over to impactus.org. Much love from us all and thank you so much for considering this partnership.